If you are glad to be away from home for a few days, make some noise! Yeah! Oh, it's good to see y'all. I feel good tonight. I feel like dancing. I love it when they call me Big Papa. Yeah! And I am glad. <laughs> I am glad to be in Indianapolis. Love the FFA band. Y'all get it on. I'm telling you, you're doing a good job. So glad to be here, y'all. I'm, I'm glad I got here. I, I flew on one of those little airplanes. I should only paid half price because only half my butt fit on that seat. <laughs> then, then I had to go to the bathroom. I got stuck in the bathroom. Oh, God. Anybody got some butter? <laughs> but anyway, I am so honored. I am so honored to be here, y'all. I, I am so thrilled to come and to share with you. I think that the FFA is the greatest youth organization in the world. And y'all ought to be very privileged to be here. Really should. I know you've come from all over. I know you've come from Alaska and from California and from Alabama, from South Carolina. I wonder if anybody is in here from Texas. Is Texas, sup homie? And I, I'm just so honored that Mississippi's in the house and Louisiana is here. Might even have some, some folks from Oregon here, Wyoming, Washington, South Dakota. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to take long. Ohio? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Rigsby. You didn't call my state, Dr. Rigsby. What's wrong with you? But I'm just so glad to be here, y'all. I feel you, dog. I hear you, baby. I want to talk to y'all for a half hour. That's all I'm going to take. And that's hard for me to talk in a half hour because I come from a predominantly black family. I don't know if you can tell that or not. I can preach all day, but I won't tonight. In, in, in the words of Britney Spears, as she spoke to her last husband, I won't keep you long. But I do have, I do have something that I want to share with y'all tonight. I want to take advantage of the fact, I want to take advantage of the fact that y'all are our leaders today. You're not tomorrow's leaders. We need leadership today in this country. And it doesn't matter to me whether you're in, in the sixth grade, the seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th, 11th, and 12th. We need leaders today. Middle school campuses, junior high campuses, high school campuses, and college campuses. We need to see the real deal today. No more of this leaders for tomorrow. I want y'all to start thinking, what can I do today to be a leader? What can I do today to make a difference? How can I start working on my legacy today? In essence, what can I do to make an impact? Not just an impression, but an impact. That's what I want to talk to you all about during my time in your first session tonight. I'm 51 years old. The older I get, listen to me, y'all. The older I get, the more I value the wisdom of my mother and my father. I know that's not a cool thing to say. I realize, I realize that some of your parents are going, gosh, come on, it's my dad. I mean, come on. He snore. I mean, come on, he's my dad. Or my mom, come on, it's my mom. But what you don't realize is that they have a wisdom that you need. The older I get, I value my grandma and my grandpa. I value that simple, old school wisdom that teaches me not just how to be a great person, but how to be a great leader, how to make an impact. You see, y'all, how many of you know that we live in such a superficial society? If you know what I'm saying, say, mm-hmm. We live in a kind of culture, check this out, y'all. We live in a kind of culture where we, we get kudos based on what we look like. Mm-hmm. So all we gotta do is go to Kmart or Walmart or Ricky Mart or Bart Mart or wherever and, 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 and get the latest Ross Dress for Less outfit and just, we can get our groove on and nobody will question us as long as we drive the right car, as long as we go to the right parties, as long as we wear the right cowboy hat, we can have our Kenny Chesney jeans hugging our behinds and looking all fine. 
I like Kenny Chesney. Do y'all like Kenny Chesney? And as long as we look a certain way, nobody's gonna question our leadership. That's the kind of superficial culture that we live in. A culture that says, you don't have to be a woman of integrity, just offer the appearance of being a woman of integrity. Our media is lying to us, saying that you don't have to be a man of character, all you have to do is offer the appearance of being a man of character. Guess what that lie has bought us? A bunch of leaders at every level who are superficial at best. You can't depend on them, you can't believe what they say, and you certainly can't follow their example. And I don't know how so many of them end up in Washington, D.C., but that's another story. The point that I'm trying to make is this. The point that I'm trying to make is this. You want to take advantage of your mom and dad. You want to take advantage of their wisdom. I want you to take advantage of the wisdom of your grandparents, the wisdom of ag teachers. If you had any idea the sacrifices that an ag teacher makes, it would blow your mind. I want you to suck the marrow out of those ag teachers. Get as much wisdom from them as you possibly can. Why? Because listen to me, young folks, you need more, listen, listen, you need more than just wisdom from a textbook to make a difference. You need more than just eight to three in school to make a difference. You need wisdom. And if we're gonna ever turn the United States of America back around to common sense values, it's gotta start with the good folks in the blue jackets with a bright future who wanna make a difference. Come on, somebody. Come on. So it doesn't matter if you're playing saxophone in the band, What's up, baby? I feel you, dog. I feel you. <laughs> or if you're sitting in the balcony in the very back, the goal is... <laughs> the goal is, what can I do to improve? What can I do to make an impact? What can I do to make a difference in a world that really has as its God entertainment? In a world that really has as its choir perception? We live in a society where we believe perception far more than we believe reality. Think with me for just a moment and you're gonna catch this. So when you live in a world like that, you can dress the outside of your cup up any way you want and you can convince people that you're all that because they don't see all of you. The goal is not to dress anything up. The goal is to present your real authentic self in such a way that you intrigue people in such a way that people say, you know what, I wanna follow her. I wanna follow him. They've got their heads on straight. They might not be the most popular person on campus, but there's something about the way they live their life that impacts me. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. I'm talking about living in a world where you are marketably different than everybody else. I wish I could go back to middle school and sign up for the FFA. It is one of my great regrets that I thought I was so cool when I was back in junior high, I thought I was too cool for the blue jacket. That's a regret I will carry with me for the rest of my life because I was one of those simple kind of guys. I was one of those, you know, Mac Daddy. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Had an afro so big I couldn't get in a Volkswagen. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I still can't get in a Volkswagen, but that's another topic for a different time. <laughs> 